What's going on YouTube? Nick Harrison here and today I'm going to talk about the tools and supplies that you need to make a pin on the lathe. What's up guys, Nick Harrison here. Wanting to talk to you today about um, the tools and supplies that you will need to make a pin on the lathe. Now, I've already made a video on how to make the pin, so I'm not gonna go over that. Um, I'm gonna make a more detailed video about how to actually make the pin, probably in a separate video. Um, the supplies and tools that you will need, the first thing you will need is a pin blank. Uh, it's usually wood or acrylic, and it's three quarter by three quarter by five, normally. Um, you'll need a pin kit, which has all the metal hardware that you need to make your pin. Um, you can get those in various places. I'll link down below all the stuff I'm going to talk about in this video, um, but I'll also leave some links um, for some places to buy some pin blanks as well as uh, pin kits. So once you get your blank, you get the brass tube out of the kit, um, and you're going to lay that on the, the pin blank and mark how long you need to cut your blank. So the first tool that you're going to need is some sort of saw to cut your blanks. Now. You can use a band saw, um, I use a miter saw, um, use about any kind of saw you want, but if you're trying to get out on the cheap, you can buy a hack saw, a hand saw, and a miter jig. Um, actually, I bought this one from Harbor Freight, but you can get them off Amazon. Again, link in the description. Um, and you can just put your blank in here and cut your blank using this. It gets out a little bit cheaper than going and buying a, a saw if you're just getting into pin turning. So the first thing you're gonna need is a saw. The second thing you're going to need is some sort of corner finder. Now, you can buy these online, you can buy these at wood shops, you can buy these on Amazon. Um, but I actually 3D printed mine because I have a 3D printer. But basically, it's just something where you can put your pin blank in here, has an angle on it, and you can find the corner of, of your blank and draw a line all the way across. I do all four corners, so you'll have lines like that, and it marks the center point of where you need to drill through your pin blank. Which brings me to my next tool that you will need is a drill press. Now a hand drill can work for this, but I don't recommend it because the accuracy is just not there with a hand drill. A pin press is perfectly vertical. Um, and so you will need this to drill through your, your pin blank and you will need a drill bit. Now drill bit, normally you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's or anywhere, but you will need a specific pin bit because a lot of pin kits are metric um, so for example if you're doing a slimline pin kit those are seven millimeter tubes you will have to have a seven millimeter drill bit um, you can't use like a you know three eighths or something something different um, so uh, you will need a, a drill bit for that the next thing um, after you have your pin blanks drilled you will need something to secure the brass tubes inside of the pin blank that's where CA glue comes in now this is a stick fast brand um, but you can use any kind of CA glue that you want, any brand. Um, CA glue normally comes in thin, medium, and thick. That's the viscosity of the glue. Um, thin is what I normally use for that. It holds just fine. Um, it's a lot more, it's thin. It's just a lot more runny um, and it uh, dries a lot faster. So that's why I use thin CA glue when gluing the tubes inside the pin blank. After the tube's dry, you're going to need to square up the ends of the pin blank. So you will need what they call a barrel trimmer, which goes on the, uh, attaches to the chuck on your drill. You will need a hand drill, by the way, cordless drill or corded, it doesn't really matter. You can actually use this on your drill press if you don't have a drill and you don't wanna buy a drill. Um, but you will need a barrel trimmer. Now, this tip of the trimmer is, is a blade and it's designed to clean the excess glue out of the inside um, of your brass tubes. So when you're gluing your tubes in the pin blank, you'll have a little bit of, of runny glue that runs inside the, the brass tubes and dries. Um, the CA glue is highly, highly sticky. Um, it, 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 it's, the bond is, is very strong with CA glue. So you can't get it out very easily. Um, you can use a pocket knife, but it's not very accurate. Um, you can end up scraping the tubes in the wrong places. Um, so you will need a barrel trimmer. The end of the barrel trimmer cleans the glue out of the inside of the brass tube. Um, that's why it goes in the drill, securely fastens, put your blank on here and clean the inside of the tube. The end part here, the little bit fatter piece that you see on the end of the barrel trimmer here is called an end mill. These are blades that um, go on the end of your pin blank and square up the end. So for some reason, when you cut your blank, if it's at a slight angle, 
that doesn't matter, that's okay. That's what this end mill is for. It squares up the end. Um, it also trims down the excess of your blank to match the, to be flush with the brass tubes. So you will need a barrel trimmer and a uh, end mill. The barrel trimmer, obviously there's multiple sizes of those because there are multiple size pins. Cigar pins, for example, are 10 millimeter. Slimline pins are seven millimeter, just like you would need a different size drill bit depending on what type of pin you're making. After you get the brass tubes cleaned out of any excess glue and you have the ends squared up or trued up, as they say, you're ready to start turning your pin. Um, at that point, you're ready to put it on the lathe. To hold those brass tubes, you will need what they call a mandrel. Now, this end goes in the headstock of your lathe. From your perspective, it'd be this way. The tailstock's down here. Um, the, the, this is a seven millimeter mandrel. Um, even if you are making a pin that is bigger than seven millimeter, if you're making a cigar pin, which is 10 millimeter, that's fine. A seven millimeter mandrel is standard. The bushings is what makes the difference, which brings me to my next thing. You will need bushings. The bushings, um, I have seven millimeter bushings here. They're just little cylinders of metal with a hole in the middle that go on your mandrel here. Um, you will need, these do vary by pin type. So if you have been making slimline pins and you're looking to make cigar pins, you will need a cigar pin set of bushings. Every different type of pin requires different types of bushings. So these go on here and it's simply to space out your pin blank. So most pins use two sections. So two brass tubes, two pin blanks. Um, you put a bushing on here, put one blank on there, put your second bushing on there, put another blank and then put your third bushing and then uh, put your screw cap on the end. When you buy the mandrel, nine times out of 10, it will just come with the mandrel and the screw cap, not the bushings, then you have to buy those separate. So this is on your lathe, you're ready to start turning. When you do that, you will need a lathe for that. I have a mini lathe here, it's just a cheap one you can buy on Amazon, Harbor Freight, um, anything will do the trick. There's nothing fancy about this, it's just a mini lathe. Um, the maximum size that I can do with this is 10 inches in diameter and 18 inches long length. So you will need a lathe. Um, you also need a lathe chisel. Now you can buy a set of any lathe chisels. It doesn't matter if you're doing wood. If you're doing acrylic, I highly recommend getting a carbide tip lathe chisel. Um, it cuts into the acrylic a lot easier than a standard wood chisel and it doesn't dull down the tip of it as much as a wood chisel will on acrylic. So I would recommend getting a carbide tip lathe chisel. Once you have your pin blank turned down roughly to the size that, um, that you would like, depending on what type of pin you're making, you're ready to start doing some finish work. Um, I recommend the micro mesh pads. These range from 1200 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit. These are designed to be used with water um, and then you know buff down your, your uh, pin blanks. If you're using wood, pin blanks, these are not as important. If you're using acrylic, these are very important. And the reason is because after you go through this entire set of micro mesh pads on an acrylic pin blank, you almost don't even need a polish. The, the acrylic will be shiny, finished, smooth. It will look awesome without even putting polish on it. Um, after you go through this set on a wood pin blank, you will need some sort of polish, clear coat, or sealer. I use a friction polish. Um, this actually activates the, the polish by friction. So when you apply the pressure to polish your pin blank, that heat heats up and cures it immediately. You don't have to wait on it to dry. Another trick um, that you can use is using CA glue as your clear coat. Um, you can just apply this to your pin blank um, and act, this will act as your clear coat or as your polish. Be careful though, because if your lathe is turning, this will fling everywhere and this does not come off very easily. Um, I can do a whole nother video and a whole nother blog post on types of finishes for your pin blank. I'm not gonna get into that now, but you will need some type of clear coat or polish when you're finishing off your, um, your pin blanks. One of the next things you're gonna need is a pin press. Now you can use your lathe as a pin press. You can make your own pin press as I did here with a toggle clamp. Um, you can check out uh, two videos ago that I did on how to make this pin press um, or what I did to make it, but you will need some sort of pin press to put everything together. If you're just starting out, you can actually just use a rubber mallet um, in your hand to kind of you know, compress all the piece, pieces of the pin together. Um, I believe that's about it, everything that you're going to, to need to make a, your first pin. Um, so 
If uh, you're an experienced pin maker watching this video and you know of something that I forgot, leave it down in the comment section. If you're brand new and you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. I always check my comments and I will answer. Um, so if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. And don't forget to find me on social media, including Twitter and Instagram at the Nick Harrison. Uh, you can find me on my website, www.meetnickharrison.com. Also on my website, you can find this entire video in a blog post form. Um, I actually put a blog post up just so if you want to look at that and go back and reference it. Um, I put new blog posts up all the time. So be sure to check out my website, www.meetnickharrison.com. For now, take it light, take it slow, and remember Nick Harrison told you so. Thanks for watching.